All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Olivia Brown McClinton. I'm the new Bureau Chief of Strategic Community Planning, overseeing the workforce team here with Ohio Moss. I'm very excited to be here with you all today, and I'm sure that we all can agree that Ohio's behavioral health workers are a valued and vital part of our health care system. Ohio Moss is committed to incentivizing seasoned professionals to return to the behavioral health field in Ohio communities. So the purpose of today's information session is to share additional details for the new Welcome Back campaign, as well as answer any questions that you may have around this opportunity. With that being said, I will turn it over to the Manager of Workforce and Community Planning, Chad Hibbs, to say a few words. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Olivia. Um, yes, uh, the, the behavioral health workforce in Ohio is very valued. And I think by uh, highlighting one of the initiatives that we're currently working on and expanding the behavioral health workforce field and um, will kind of show the commitment that we have uh, in, in stabilizing and expanding this important workforce moving forward. Uh, so this is just one of, uh, of a number of initiatives and programs that we'll be uh, rolling out uh, in the coming weeks and months. Um, and we do appreciate uh, your attendance and, and learning about this specific one this afternoon. So I will turn it over uh, to one of our workforce leads, Kelly Malik, who will be walking us through the webinar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Olivia. Again, good afternoon, everybody. So we are going to chat a little bit um, this afternoon and cover the Welcome Back campaign. We will provide um, a brief overview and just some general information in regards to the Welcome Back campaign. We'll talk a little bit about the eligibility um, requirements for the Welcome Back campaign, as well as the two funding options that go along with this funding campaign and then the funding period itself. And then we will close with um, some additional information on how to track and collect data for this initiative, um, how to request disbursement and other important dates related to this initiative. So at any time, please feel free to pose a question in the chat box and then we will answer those um, at the end of the uh, slide deck. All right, so nearly one year ago, actually in January here of 2023, Governor DeWine delivered his state of the state address and declared the days of not talking openly about mental health of looking the other way are over. And despite the good intentions of the past, our country has never fully built a community mental health system. And we are seeing the effects of that today, not just here in Ohio, but across the US. In fact, a study that was done here at Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services in 2021 saw the demand for behavioral health services increase 353%, while the workforce only increased 174%. This leaves a huge gap, and, is, and it is estimated that nearly 2.4 million Ohioans live in communities without enough behavioral health professionals. So in 2022, Ohio received approval from the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, and the Ohio General Assembly to invest federal funds from the American Rescue Plan Act in efforts to boost the number of qualified professionals who are trained and ready to enter the behavioral health workforce in the next two, one to two years and who are committed to serving in community behavioral health centers regulated by Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services. This 5 million of the Workforce Development Strategic Fund investment will incentivize people to return to behavioral health workforce. Applications just opened here last month in November and will remain open through fiscal year 24. This particular funding opportunity will be first come, first served as individuals are hired back into the field until these funding um, opportunities and monies are exhausted. Again, these are one-time dollars through ARPA and must be used by March of 2025. So we do have a, um, we have recently launched a web page dedicated to the Welcome Back campaign, and you can find the address that's noted above, or you can also access this through our wellness workforce page here at the department. 
and we will put links um, for this website in the chat box. This website will provide an overview of the program, a description on how funds can be used and who is eligible to receive welcome back funds in terms of the provider eligibility. Additionally, a welcome back toolkit has been included with various flyers and posters that can be used to recruit professionals back into the field and into positions at your organization. There are also social media posts that can be uploaded to your social media outlets, promoting your organization on a participating site for this campaign. Lastly, we've also uploaded a GFMS guidebook that will be listed on this page that can also be downloaded and used as a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply for this funding opportunity in our GFMS system. So you will see here on the page, it will say additional downloads and that GFMS guidebook can be found and downloaded and located there. Now there are two elements to eligibility for the Welcome Back campaign. First is the eligibility requirements for a participating community behavioral health center. In order to participate, the Community Behavioral Health Center must be licensed by Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services and provide Medicaid home and community-based services, specifically types 84 and 95. This is also similar to our Great Minds Initiative. However, these two funding campaigns are completely different and will require separate applications. However, the eligibility for this, the Community Behavioral Health Center are the same. The other part of eligibility is on behalf of the new employee who is receiving the recruitment incentive. These workers must have worked in a previous behavioral health position in the past and not have been employed in a behavioral health position within the last 30 days of their prior to their start date. They also must be hired into a direct service position at their new community behavioral health center. The new hire can be full or part-time status and does not need to be a licensed professional. We have also allowed for this opportunity to expand to hires at your agency that have been employed for a start date of July 1st of 2023 or later of this year. So in essence, if you have employees that you've hired since July 1st of this year, and they meet the worker eligibility requirements, they would be eligible for this recruitment incentive. And I wanna make a couple of clarifying points. New hires do not need to be previously employed by a community behavioral health center. We have been very flexible in this that they just needed to be um, employed in a be previous behavioral health position in any setting. So again, they do not need to be previously employed at a community behavioral, behavioral health center. However, their new role in order to be eligible for this opportunity needs to be in a qualifying community behavioral health center, which again is regulated and licensed by Ohio Mental Health Services, and they provide those Medicaid home and community-based services types 84 and 95. Now, worker eligibility for the funds do not require that they again have worked in that CBHC, but they've held a behavioral health position in the past. So for example, let's say a case manager worked at a particular company from 2019 to 2022, and they got burned out. So maybe they've left behavioral health altogether and went to work in another industry like retail. If this individual accepts a position at your organization, and it again is for a direct service position, and they have not held another role in behavioral health within the past 30 days, they would be eligible to receive this recruitment incentive. Another distinction is for interns specifically. If you hire someone who has only completed an internship in behavioral health and not worked in a direct behavioral health role in the past, they would not be eligible. However, if you have a employee who has been an intern, but they've held a previous behavioral health role, they would be eligible. Now, this is not to confuse those internships that are part of the Great Minds Fellowship um, Initiative. That is a completely separate program, and those interns would not qualify for this opportunity if they are considered a Great Minds Fellow. 
Another scenario would be if someone returned as a supervisor and would they be considered supporting clients? So if the supervisor that is hired is providing any direct services to clients, they too would be eligible for this recruitment incentive. If they are strictly administrative in their role, then they would not be eligible for this recruitment incentive. Another question that's been posed in the past couple of weeks is do contract employees count? Employees, new employees for this particular initiative must be employed by the agency and therefore on the payroll. Contract employees would not suffice. And lastly, if you are a community behavioral health center and you have offices or locations out of state, those employees that are hired for direct behavioral health positions in other states would not qualify for this opportunity. Funding is for new employees working at the Community Behavioral Health Center in, in Ohio only. So we wanted to just provide you with um, some examples of some of the eligible and non-eligible positions when we say direct behavioral health roles. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see, um, again, just a small list of positions that may uh, be included in this initiative. So we have case managers, intake specialists, therapists, counselors, nurses, employment specialists, peer support specialists, and benefit specialists. So again, anyone that is providing direct service to clients at that qualifying community beha behavioral health center would be eligible for this particular um, campaign. Now, positions that would not qualify, human resource positions, IT positions, administrative professionals, and then residential position, positions. The reason that the residential do not count is again, because these dollars are supporting Medicaid clients in home and community uh, based services, not in institutional or residential or inpatient settings. So a little bit about um, the funding options that are available. Again, the monies for this particular campaign will be managed by you as a community behavioral health center and paid directly to new hired staff and or existing staff that assisted with the recruitment efforts. So you'll see here for option one, you can provide up to $2,500 for the new employee and also give up to a $500 referral bonus for any internal employee or sponsoring employee at your agency. You can see the total then sums $3,000. Now, if you have a new hire and there was not an internal referral source or sponsor, then you may provide up to $3,000 for each new employee as a sign-on bonus. Again, for both options, whether it's with a referral, uh, referring employee or sponsor or not, the, amount cannot exceed $3,000. CBHCs will also have the flexibility to allocate these funds at their discretion. So some agencies may choose to give the full amount up front upon hire and others may choose to give it in different um, time frames and intervals based on when the person starts. That is completely up to the Community Behavioral Health Center to manage. So we wanna talk a little bit about the funding period because this is important. As many of you know, we do not operate on a typical calendar uh, year here in the state. We operate on a state fiscal calendar, which starts July 1st and goes through June 30th of 2024. So that will be important to note because the quarters that we look at will be based on the state fiscal year. We will also have um, a chance for the renewal of these funds in fiscal year 25 based on how much is used here in, in fiscal year 24. So we will evaluate what funds are left over at the end of this fiscal year here in June. And then we will um, at that time announce if we were gonna be renewing any of these funds into the fiscal year 25, which would begin in July 1st of 2024. Again, all of these funds have to be used by March of 2025. And applications to um, obtain these funds will be managed through our grants management system here at Ohio Mental Health and Addiction Services, otherwise known as uh, GFMS. And again, you can refer to the guidebook 
on the welcome back page for step by step instructions. Again, just want to reiterate that there will be a separate application for the welcome back campaign from the Great Minds Initiative. So we do know that there are a lot of community behavioral health centers that intend to um, participate in both funding opportunities, but they will be separate applications. We have not put a specific limit to the amount an agency can apply for for the funding. However, we do encourage you to consider several factors when completing your application. So one of the first things to look at is Again, the potential of how many new hires you've had since July 1st until here the end of December that would meet the qualifications to receive this recruitment bonus. In addition, you would want to anticipate the amount of new employees you may have from January until June of next year. You can do this again by looking at your previous um, hiring trends and then look at any current and anticipated openings that you have into fiscal year 24. And then that will give you an idea of how to uh, complete your application and for the amount to ask for. Now, a little bit on the tracking, um, data tracking, disbursement, and other important dates. The Hiring Community Behavioral Health Center will ensure via a worker self-attestation that the new employee meets the criteria outlined in the worker eligibility for this funding opportunity. So we've given you a sample of what this um, self-attestation form looks like. We've also uploaded this self-attestation form to our Welcome Back uh, website under additional downloads. Funds may be used to incentivize, again, referring employees of newly hired staff, and the CBHCs must also comply with reporting and data collection requirements for the opportunity. Additionally, if you have any questions about the self-attestation form, please do not hesitate to reach out to a member of our team by emailing our workforce box. We can also send you the electronic version of this form if you are not able to obtain that um, fr directly from the website. The self-attestation form will not need to be turned into us when you are completing your disbursement request. However, we do require you to keep a copy on file at your organization, and this is recommended for the purposes of any audits that may happen in the future. CBHCs, again, are going to be required to track and provide program and data information. Your data, which will be completed for each new employee that is hired, can be completed on the data sheet once the employee onboards at any time during the quarter. So we encourage you to report and request disbursement for your newly hired employee in the quarter that they start at your agency. This will allow you to limit your disbursement request to one per quarter. We've listed three main reporting due dates. The first is just right around the corner here, and it will cover really two quarters. It will cover any new hires that you have starting July 1st of 2023 through December here of 2023. So again, if you have new hires that meet um, the criteria and you'd like to request this bonus incentive for them, you will put their uh, information on the data tracking form and report that data no later than the end of January of 2024. We then will start to look at the next quarter, which starts in January, January 1st, and will run through March, the end of March of 2024. Again, that data will be due at the end of April, by the end of April of 2024. And then our last quarter of data will be running from April 1st through June 30th. And we will expect to have that data reported to us by the end of July of 2024. So again, you see these dates do look a little different than the typical calendar year, but this aligns with the state fiscal year. Now, in terms of reporting data for those um, employees that are receiving the referral bonus, you'll see here in just a moment on the data tracking form that you will just record if there was a referral bonus paid out, but that will be all of the additional information that we will need on that. Those internal or sponsored uh, referral workers do not need to sign the self-attestation form or any other form. 
Again, just to keep you, just as a reminder, this funding again will be open as a first come first serve basis until all funds are exhausted. And our team then will be conducting a thorough review of dispersed funds in the end of 2024 to determine what amount, if any of the remaining 5 million will be available for fiscal year 25. So this is um, a sample of the data tracking form. So when you request disbursement for the new hires that you have for that quarter, you will be asked to complete this data form. This data form will be emailed to our workforce box before you request dis disbursement in GFMS. We will be sending out the disbursement instructions along with this data tracking tool for those applications that have been approved um, in the coming days. Please follow the instructions on the data tab. This will be an this will also need to be um, completed and returned back to us in the format of an Excel workbook. Please do not PDF your data tracking form when you send it back to us before disbursement. We will also provide um, in the data instructions a short video on how to request disbursement in GFMS for those of you that are not as familiar with our GFMS system. So just again, to um, give you a little bit of an overview of the data you'll be looking for, um, the date of the disbursement will just be, again, the date that you're going to be submitting for that quarter. And then the self-attestation column will just be a checkbox that your new employee has completed the self-attestation form and you have that on file. We will also require you to um, account for the date of hire for the new employee, the employee's uh, first and last name, their previous job title, their current job title, the counties in which they are going to be serving in Ohio at their new role, and then how much um, of a recruitment bonus or incentive did you pay to the employee? And again, if there was an a referring employee or sponsor, that will be a yes, no response. And then the incentive um, that you paid to the referring employee, if there is one. We've also added an additional comments section. And again, that will be just for any general comments. Uh, maybe you have um, some exciting information to share with us about the welcome campaign, welcome back campaign. Uh, maybe you have uh, you know, pictures or other great stories to tell um, in regards to the welcome back campaign. You can share that all through the comments section and then uploading any additional pictures or whatnot. We would prefer that you request your disbursement of funds upon hire of your new employees. We, again, realize that you may not pay out the full recruitment bonus at the time of hire, but we prefer you request the full amount when you report your data upon that person's hire. Um, again, we talked a little bit about those uh, disbursement um, request timeframes. Again, the first one is right around the corner, so that will cover the first two quarters in essence from July 1st to the end of December. And we ask that you submit that always within 30 days at the end of a quarter. So that will be due here um, by the end of January. One last key point, if you have collected your data and are ready to request disbursement for more funding than was previously awarded in your application, you will need to request a revision to your application. And you can always make those requests um, to a revision by emailing us in the workforce box and then just let us know what changes you intend to make to the line item budget in GFMS. And with that, again, please send any questions you may have um, to our workforce box um, email address. We are here to help you and assist you. If you're new to GFMS, again, we can get on a virtual call and assist you with that application. Um, but again, we are here to answer any questions that you may have. And so with that, um, I will see if there's any questions in the chat box, but we do have our workforce box email address here posted. So again, please utilize that in the coming weeks with anything what we can assist you as it relates to the Welcome Back campaign. Does anyone have any questions? And 
if with not, I will go ahead and put the Welcome Back campaign website into the chat box for folks as well. There was a question from Amy, does this apply to peer supporters? Yes, if they are directly serving clients at your organization in a peer capacity, yes, they would qualify for the uh, Welcome Back campaign. Anything else? All right, well, with that, again, I thank everybody uh, for coming today. I know we're right around the holiday season and folks are you know, busy. So um, we do appreciate you taking the time to attend the webinar today. We have recorded this and we will be posting this to our Welcome Back campaign website in the next coming days. So look for that as well. And again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any one of us here at um, Mental Health and Addiction Services and our workforce team through our workforce email box. I hope you all have a great holiday season. Thank you.